I suppose looking back, one has to say it was a surprise that the design was so um, readily and easily accepted. Uh, but for a, um, an architect of that period, we're now described rather unfortunately by that word brutalist. Um, but basically, the, the form or the, should derive from, uh, from the function. And um, of course, a, co a college uh, for 120 men was a, a real one-off in terms of, of function. So if, the, if what took place in the building uh, could, be, could generate the form, you would end up with a, uh, presumably, a, an original and a form. Um, I mean, by uh, I've often been asked, um, how is it you produce all these boring, straightforward office buildings, and at the same time, the Christchurch Town Hall or, or, or College House? And all the other answer was simply, quite simply, all those office buildings are just so much floor space um, for occupants. You don't, you don't even know who the occupants or the owners are going to be. Whereas um, a building like um, College House has specific and unique functions which could be expressed. But the usual thing at that time would be to, I mean, it was a very big, generous site for the, as it's been proved for the function, um, would be to litter blocks about it and face them all to the sun, and, and that's that. In a way, the, the, the chapel was the culmination of that whole design process of, of load-bearing concrete block and concrete and so on. Um, and of, of that period it was really by far and away the best building that, um, that we designed. Um, that was the, the sort of uh, vocabulary that we developed. Um, first of all, a little block of flats in uh, uh, what street? No matter. Um, Dorset. Which Dorset Street is, yes, which was uh, at one stage regarded as the um, the buses, the tourist buses used to go to tour around it to see the ugliest building in New Zealand. We were very proud of that. <laughs> so if you if you look at those flats, they adopt this concrete block up to um, door height, and then concrete beams after that, and so on. And it was a very economic and simple way to build. And concrete block walls. Uh, could not easily be damaged by students. <laughs> if, if, if we followed the uh, uh, Oxford-Cambridge process, um, we would have um, a staircase with a, a bedroom, um, bedrooms, bedroom study either side and one bathroom. Well, that was ideal, but obviously it'd be far too uh, costly. And after some considerable debate, we decided that a, 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 a board and ourselves decided that um, five students to one staircase uh, and bathroom. Now that, that's entirely different from the normal hostel process where you had uh, um, rooms either side of a corridor and the loos at one end. And, um, that, that was the hostel form. Assuming that, the, that inevitably the rooms would be, tend to be underheated, it was, please God may they face north. Uh, I'd suffered in south-facing uh, rooms in Auckland. Um, so um, five, uh, five students to a staircase and a, a lavatory washroom block. Um, and that, those five made a, a set of, for 15. So that was the sort of grouping. Now that, uh, that I think was a very important decision of the, of the board that, that would be organised like that. And it was a result of quite some some debate. My experience in a rock hall in Auckland where uh, um, the toilet block, lavatory block was at one end and um, of course there were all sorts of hijinks going on and, and um, overflowing baths and all the rest of it. So um, and the water pouring down through the building which we all had to pay for. Um, so it, was, it made sense to separate the uh, the stack the bathrooms one on top of the other so that when um, they overflowed or damaged it was at least confined to that and that then you put the water tanks at the top. They were, um, there was a very, um, quite a, a well-known um, illustration of them in the Royal Institute of British Architects magazine 
and they, where they were described as the grandest ruse in Christendom. <laughs> Well, the, the basic matrix of the cosmology was the eight, that was the predominant part, it was the eight sets, but there were um, ultimately, initially only one, but there were three special spaces. Um, we used to refer to them to the, to the three crowns of the college, um, the dining hall, the chapel, and the library. Um, the dining hall built first, then the chapel, then, then, then the library. and. Um, they needed to be given some distinctive form. On architectural terms, they, they, I suppose they could be, could be described as constructivist. It's a tour de force of timber structure. Look how clever we are with timber. Which, which New Zealand architects always, have always, um, at that period of architecture, we were always described as sort of carpenters. And we, we, um, as against the European process of, of dealing with mass, uh, we New Zealanders were brought up as carpenters, lots of timber sticking it together. And how, we, we put we knitted things together well, so that was following that tradition. Uh, of course, without the library, the quadrangle just faded out. So we longed to be able to, to get on with the library, and somehow or other, I mean, the, the required function was barely large enough to to end the quadrangle. So um, one of the reasons for, for not the only one, one of the reasons for the double height space was to, was to increase the bulk, fundamentally, <laughs> and, and to be a, um, a strong enough form to compete with all the um, the sets either side. Sufficient substance to hold the space. It only just does it. Well, mind you, it's now confused by the big trees. <laughs> the problem in some respects of the chapel was that, that the um, physical requirements of it were um, not large enough to balance the rest of the, of the college. So um, the first design was up, up on, on a... Uh, 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 ground floor of, of offices and so on uh, and standing on legs and then it did the normal process of, of a dominant roof and small walls which is the tradition of, of um, uh, churches in New Zealand and um, when that was submitted to the board uh, Dean Sullivan with his great wit said oh uh, my lord, it looks like a mission, Melanesian mission hut on legs. And I said, well, look, well, that stuffed it, hasn't it? I mean, what? so that roars of laughter and whoosh, was away. First of all, it was a, um, a chapel. Uh, and it, because I had the experience of being at the uh, chapel at Christ College where we, where we were in pews facing each other in the traditional chapel form. Um, altar at one end, lectern at the other. The normal thing in Christchurch was low walls, big dominant roof for chapel. Well, we reversed the process, tall walls and an elaborate timber structure. Again, a tour de force of timber. Um, this is a rather unusual design. It, look, this roof. I thought, oh, here we go, we were in trouble. And at that point, um, Lyle Holmes, the brilliant engineer, was sitting next to me and he said, Oh, look, my lord, don't you see? It's, it's an M and a W. It's Warren and Marnie. And I thought, Oh, God, uh, that wrecked it. And all the board roared with laughter. Uh, a huge joke. Um, and I said, I leant to Lyle and said, Well, you've stuffed it, haven't you now? That's really wrecked it. And he said, No, 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 look, look, they're not going to vote. They know it, it, it's passed. It's, it's a great way of arriving. It's a terrible way to arrive if you're late. <laughs> Every eye looks at you. Yes, you, you, you come up through. It, it, it is a wonderful way to uh, approach it. Um, and of course, the advantage of sitting in the chapel up on, on legs, it means that the, normally speaking, um, the usual church, there is the main uh, space and then there are um, other smaller rooms attached to it which, which modify the overall form. 
And if you can tuck them underneath, the um, form itself becomes dominant, the chapel becomes dominant. Basically the chapel was a culmination of that whole process um, where we had, at that time, um, developed the techniques and design of the use of, of concrete and concrete block and so on. It, it, it was a wonderful commission. We, by that time we had we, we'd got to grips with the whole um, making process uh, and um, what could be achieved with those um, materials and uh, with, with and with using the materials that um, that we had available. Incidentally, um, what we did have available then was um, a very good material called Maranti, which was imported from Southeast Asia. It, it would then it was quite reasonable. It could be described as poor man's mahogany, but it was it was absolutely stable. And, and um, lovely dark, well it could be nicely stained and so on. We didn't have very much else, I mean it was concrete block, fair face concrete, timber, um, copper roofs, all good f fundamental basic materials. Um, that's characteristic of the whole buildings, the very simple use of materials. It was a limited palette which, which we learnt how to use. After that was over, the, the whole palette um, increased enormously. Um, not necessarily with a better end result, because you, you know, you, um, if you haven't much choice and you really have to learn how to use it, well, you get it right, don't you? <laughs> <laughs>